Why are 110 volt RV adapters, also known as pigtails, so confusing? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today in staying on the road. Then after staying on the road, we're going to jump into enjoying the RV life segment. And it's going to be all about tips for purchasing your first RV. I can't wait to get into that one. And once again, we're going to be going on a road trip. And Alexis, this week is going to take us to the most famous RV parks in the U.S. The most famous RV parks in the U.S. This ought to be good. A little sarcasm there, I think. And then at the next stop, we're going to wrap, or excuse me, that's going to be at the next stop. And then with the RV envy, we're going to wrap up the show and talk about Dicor products for sealing. This is Eric Stark with the Smart RVer podcast, delivering the smarts you need to enjoy the freedom of the RV lifestyle without the fear of breaking down. Today is episode 141. So let's just jump right into this and see what we got. So Alexis, welcome to the show. Thanks, Eric. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> Good. So you Good. ready to take us to some exciting places today? Sure. Why not? Okay. I got my notes mixed up. Had to just kind of look through some things here. I see how you are. All right. So we're going to talk about, not yet, but... Oh, yeah, we're getting into it right now. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go on a rant or talk about anything because we're going to kind of cover it and join the RV life. Because we're going to be yakking about tips for purchasing your first RV. Ah. And I know Mm -hmm. my favorite subject's going to come up in here. Yes, sir. My new favorite subject. (laughs) First off, Alexis, why would we want to list on how to purchase our first RV. How hard could it be? Well, actually very. (laughs) There's a lot of factors that go into this. And I kind of view it as buying a home. You know, even if you have one, it's like buying a second home then because you're going to be living in it (laughs) even if you don't do it full time. So Mm -hmm. it is a big investment. You want to spend your money wisely. So we're going to tell you a few tips on how to do it the best way. That's for sure. And you know, I'm sure most of you have bought a home. You've obviously bought an RV. And even if you thoroughly check it out, there's always something you miss. Yeah. Gosh, how did I see that? You know, what was I thinking? But, you know, buying an RV, one thing that I I hear a lot is people coming into the store. We got a really great deal on this RV. Mm. Man, it's just perfect. And it's not, you know, sometimes they'll bring it in. Hey, can you come out here and look at this and tell me what um, I need to fix this? And, you know, the sidewall is falling off. You, you think <laughs> they can just put a little glue on it or something, you know? Right. Some dive core roof sealant, you know, and it's going to fix it. It's not it. And so you really have to be cautious. And don't let, like, a really nice-looking interior or a floor pan seduce you into buying the RV when maybe the roof is caving in on itself. So that's what we're going to discuss today is these things. And we're, we're not going to get into it. There's a lot of stuff. Here. Yeah, there are. So Alexis, what are the first five things you would recommend? Okay. Well, here we go with the list. First of all, define your needs. That's huge because everybody's different. And then second, set a budget. <laughs> Definitely got to do that. And then number three, new or used. Oh, Oh, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Do not buy new. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Is that all? (laughs) No. Okay, so let me clarify that. If you're going to buy new, make sure you check it out more thoroughly than you would a new or a used one because a new one has a warranty. And you think that warranty is going to bail you out every time, and it doesn't. And also, if you buy a new RV, let's say in the state of Arizona, but you live in Colorado, will that warranty follow the RV? Now, you would say, oh, definitely, I'm going to buy a big brand, and I know I can take it to a dealership near my town because they sell the same brand. Think again. They might not work on it because they did not sell it to you. We hear of this all the time. And even here locally, we have a dealership that someone brought their RV to them to get the refrigerator worked on under warranty. And they said, no, we won't warranty it because you didn't buy it here. Now, one thing they didn't tell, which is really nerve wracking, is that the refrigerator warranty could be done through any Dometic warranty center. They made it sound like they had to go to the 
you know, someone who sold the brand, like when mm-hmm. they bought the RV. So they will even kind of cheat you out of getting things fixed under RV or under warranty that wouldn't even affect them. So be very cautious and ask all the questions, you know, if warranty work. And if you buy it in Colorado or in Arizona, I would call the dealership in Colorado and say, hey, I just bought an RV in Arizona, even though you haven't done it yet, and ask them if, and tell them it needs some warranty work. See what they say. You have to go in this, into this with your eyes wide open. The dealerships will tell you anything to get that RV off the lot. They will tell you anything. Mm-hmm. And that probably irritates some people out there who've bought a new RV, who are facing this, or someone who sells RVs, and maybe you disagree with it. But you know what? Experience is said. They will cheat you every time. Right. And buying a new or a used RV, you still have to be very cautious. There's people that inspect RVs for a living, and if you're not sure how to do it, call them up. Yep. It might cost 500 bucks, might cost a thousand, but it might save you thousands in the mm-hmm. long run. All right, sorry, Alexis, got a little sidetrack. Nah. Ah, right, love it. Okay, go on. <laughs> no, very good points. Honestly, it's you got to think about it. It's so important. So moving right along, number four, you want to research RV types. That's huge, especially for what area you live in. Um, Inspect thoroughly. Like you just said, no matter if it's new or used, it does not matter. Have it inspected if you don't know what to look for. And then, of course, you got to test drive it, especially if it's a motorhome. Um, Number seven, amenities and features. Evaluate what you need. Eight and number eight is towing capacity. Um, do you have the right truck for that trailer that you're looking at? You know, you got to think about that. Number nine is maintenance and repairs. That's a huge deal. We talk about that all the time because you have to keep up with it. Otherwise, you're going to be spending way more money than you have to. Number 10 is join RV communities. We've talked about this before, too. And that can be such an essential asset because people that have been doing this for way longer than you have could have some really good tips for you. Number 11 is consider resale value. That's a big thing. I didn't even think about that when I did this research, you know. Some brands hold their value better than others. So if you want to upgrade in a few years, that's something to think about. And then number 12, of course, is insurance and warranties. Um, So check it all out. Read the fine print, like you said, and and make an informed decision. There's one thing you said there was... um... Well, it kind of fits into like the research, research RV types, um, the amenities and such. You know, when you set your budget, it sets the size of the RV too. Yeah. Yep. There's always this inclination to buy bigger because you got more room, you have more space, one more slide out, you know? Right. And I would look at it more like really buy what you need. If it's one less slide out, go for it because mm-hmm. one less slide out is one less problem you're going to have. <laughs> That's true. And slide outs are problems. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a slide out, you will have a headache one day. It's going to bite you and it's going to bite you when you least expect it. Yep. That's the way these things are built. But understand that bigger with these things is not always better. Right. There's a size where also it's just too big. Like here in Montana where we live, smaller trailer. In fact, motorhomes are almost non-existent up here. Right. Everybody pulls trailers because Mm -hmm. they fit into so many different places where motorhomes won't fit Mm -hmm. so consider that you know and if you're buying used consider where you want to go because you might want to go where there's rv parks but they won't let the rv in because it's too old oh really yeah so man there you go (laughs) you know that might not be the end of the world but it's just something to consider Mm -hmm. you know and, and buying used is always good because the rv has gone through the paces and generally what you see is what you get. Now there's can be hidden things and that's why you have to inspect it. And when someone's selling an RV, you know, they might tell you that this is okay, but check it out anyways. Don't just take their word for it. You know, when they say the refrigerator works, well, you want to see it working, not just take their word for it. Because once you buy it, it's yours. There's mm-hmm. nothing you're going to do about it. And it's the same with the dealership. Even if they say, oh, you got a hundred day warranty, you can bring it back and buy a new one <laughs> or you can bring it back. They're not going to let you off the lot without buying something else. No matter Mm -hmm. what, you're going to give them some money. So don't fall for that either. Be very cautious when you're doing this stuff. I can't reiterate that enough. (laughs) (laughs) It's only because I hate seeing people getting taken advantage of. It happens all the time, way too often. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you, Alexis. So those are some good tips. And again, they're going to be on our website, thesmartrver.com, under Enjoying the RV Life. And as a reminder, if you go to sunpromanufacturing.com, you can check out our new Freightliner windshield cover kits. 
These are solid black, so they don't allow any light in, any light out. You can't see in, can't see out. They're super cool. So if you have a Freightliner M2 or S2 RV, this might be the windshield cover for you. So check it out at sunpromfg.com. Now that brings us to staying on the road. The title of this is Why Are 110 Volt Power Adapters, also known as Pigtails, So Confusing? Well, they can be confusing, and it's because we sometimes just don't fully understand what our RV is, what power system it has. But more than likely, every RVer has at least 110 volt adapter or pigtail. They're kind of the same thing. Pigtails are just longer than an adapter. So we might float back and forth here with the terminology, but just it's the same. And over the years, the adapters have expanded on how they're configured because RVs have changed. Years ago, they used to be much more straightforward. There are less adapters because most RV cords or power cords were hardwired into the RV. And they weren't removable with a twist like uh, twist lock like that they are now or at present. And this matters because when you need to purchase um, an adapter, unless you know exactly what you need, you're going to be presented with options or questions that can easily confuse what you thought you knew to now you don't know. <laughs> they can be confusing. And, and again, this from comes from experience in our store. Someone walks in, I need a 110 volt adapter. Well, what are you trying to do? Well, I need to plug into my house. Well, what does your RV have? Well, I don't know. It's got a cord on it like they all do. Is it hardwired? Is it plug inside? These are all things. So before we get into the adapter, let's set, a, let's set this up so everybody can follow along and, and understand why this can be confusing. And so that's what we want to do is strip the confusion out of here, make it simple. So first off, there's two types of power services that are available for RVs. So some RVs come with a 50 amp service, which the cord that plugs into the shore power would have four prongs on it. And that's standard. That's what they all have. So it's four prongs. It's going to plug into a shore power or a box that has uh, four receptacles on it, just plugs right in. And the other is a 30 amp service and it's going to have three prongs. One is round and it's straight and the other two are flat and they're at an angle. So now here's a fun fact for you. We're going to turn this into a big old fun thing, right? <laughs> so 50, a 50 amp service is 220 volts. So it's usually found on RVs with two air conditioners. If an RV has two air conditioners, it's definitely going to have 50 amp services. Sometimes it's on RVs with only one air conditioner. But the RV probably has the option of adding a second one because you have to have 50 amps to run both ACs, at least to do it easily. And so that 220 volts is not just like 220 volts going to the RV and everything the RV is 220 volts. That's not the case. It goes to the power center, which has two 110 volt legs on it or bus bars, and they just distribute the power out one, let's say, to the front of the RV, one to the rear of the RV. So it's the RV has 110-volt circuits in it. It's just 220 coming in. And one air conditioner will be on one half of the power center, and the other air conditioner will be on the other half of the power center. So I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully that clears that up, what a 50-amp or a 50 amp service is. And 30 amps it's just 30 amps. It's 110 volts. It's not 220 or anything like that. It has three prongs, but it's 110 volts. Now, even electricians have mixed this up because they don't understand the RV. They see three prongs and they think it's like a welder with 220, but it's not. So now the next thing we need to know if your 50 or 30 amp service that you have in your RV is hardwired or if it uses a twist lock connector. Now, let me explain what the difference is. So again, we're going to clear this up. So the twist lock is what's primarily used today on most RVs, but the hardwire system is still being used and it was very popular in the years gone by. So hardwired is when you have a cord that comes out of the RV, you know, where wherever you store the cord, you pull it out and the cord just stays inside of this compartment. It doesn't come out detached from the RV. So it's hard wired in. It, it goes into a box and the end of the cord is wired into a box. So that's hard wired. Now a twist lock is different. It has an outlet on the side of the RV with a lid. You flip the lid up and you take the end of the power cord and it 
goes into this outlet and you twist it and it has a ring on it that you tighten down and that locks it in place. Twist lock. So that's removable. And I bring this up because quite often people will ask us about a, a cord or an adapter and they just assume that we know what they have. And as it always goes, if we think it's hardwired, it's a twist lock. If we think it's a twist lock, it's hardwired. So we have to ask. And sometimes they give us a funny look because it's a twist lock and or it's hardwired. And they just assume every RV is that way. And, and rightly so. That's how their RV came. So it's a natural thing to assume. But you need to know what you have. So now that you know whether you have a 50 amp or 30 amp system and how it's wired, whether it's hardwired or twist locks, now we can go on. So now you understand that you 50 amp, 30 amp, twist lock, hardwired. So you have that under control. So let's untangle the rest of the 110 volt adapter confusion. So let's start with the twist lock system. So you can adapt the twist lock system by using the power cord, which would be plugged, attached or plugged into the side of the RV. And it's going to leave the power cord or excuse me. Um, yeah, it would leave the adapters out of the equation. So if you have the power cord that's plugged into the side of the RV, into the twist lock, then the adapters would go on the end of the power cord. Those adapters are the same adapters that you would use if you had a hardwired system because they're going on the end of the power cord. Because if you have a 50 amp twist lock system, the end of the power cord is going to have a 50 amp end on it, which is going to be four prongs just like a hardwired one. And the same with a 30 amp system. If you have a 30 amp twist lock system and you plug the power cord into the side of the RV, the other end of the cord that goes into shore power will be a 30 amp, a three prong system. So that doesn't change out at the end of the cord that goes into shore power. It only changes at the side of the RV. So you can go two different ways if you have the twist lock system. You can use your power cord and then put adapters on the end of your power cord to adapt it down from 50 amps to 30 amps or to 15 amps to plug it into a regular household outlet or you can get an adapter that plugs into the side of your rv that will adapt down to 50 amps or 15 amps if you have a 50 amp system then you could plug a 30 amp cord into it or an extension cord for 15 amps then plug it into the power source so i hope that makes sense so you can either use an adapter with the twist lock system directly on the side of the rv and then hook a cord up to it or you can use your power cord and adapt down from there so it entirely depends on what you're doing now if your rv is parked at your house and you have the twist lock system and you just want to keep it plugged in to keep your batteries charged up you could just get an adapter that goes from let's say 50 amps to 15 plug an extension cord into it and plug it into an outlet at your house and that'll keep your batteries charged. That'll work just fine. So you get the picture here? Hopefully so. And then if you have a hardwired system, the adapters just go right on the end of the cord because the the hardwired end is hardwired. It's in the RV. You can't do anything with it. It's there. It's permanent. So now your adapters become simpler because you only have one choice or one type to choose from. So if you have a 50 amp cord with four prongs on it and you want to go to 30 amp, then you get an adapter that does such. Or if you want to go to 15 amps, you can get an adapter. The same with the 30 amp power cord as well. So hardwired versus twist lock, that's the big difference. And I think that's where some of the confusion comes in. And then not understanding always the 220 and 110 volts either. 50 amp is 220, 30 amp is 110. Like I said, that can get confusing because people don't understand how to wire it and they I guess they're overthinking it because they don't need to do it because the outlets are already there in most cases. So if you have questions about this, you know, you can listen to the podcast again. We'll have this information in the show notes as well. So you can check it out on the website, but it's important to understand that way when you walk into the store, you're getting one adapter, you're getting the right adapter the first time, and you don't have to have this lesson taught to you. And it's also knowing your RV. Everything we talk about on this podcast is so you get to know your RV. So you are the do-it-yourselfer and you can manage your RV, you know, from top to bottom. You understand it. You know what to ask for, what system you have, what adapters you need. So hopefully this makes sense to you. And then it be, it comes in handy and also helping others too. You know, you're with your buddy. He's not sure what he has when you get to the RV store. Well, you can help him out. You can become the expert. It makes life easier. As always, the more you know, 
the light, the easier it becomes. Like I said, this, this is on our website. And also you can look at the description in the podcast notes and this information is there as well. So you certainly have a resource to go back to and check it out. Okay, so that's going to bring us now to the next stop, exploring the most famous RV parks in the United States. So, Alexis. Yes. <laughs> tell us about these RV parks, the well, most famous ones. Mm, I just want to, like, preface this by saying, not necessarily, you know, the oh, final list, but it's go. one list. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, leave anybody out in case they think their park is more famous, because... I get it. This is just one of the many lists, but it is a popular one. So, starting off with number one, the Trailer Village RV Park, Grand Canyon National Park, Arizona. I mean, it doesn't get more RV than Arizona, right? <laughs> that's kind of the central for it. So, that's a beautiful one. Do you do you know that one, or is it like no, way off in another? I imagine yeah. it's all about the Grand Canyon, just the views yeah. and stuff. You know, so that's I bet cool. It's though, cool, right? And then number two is Yellowstone Grizzly RV Park in West Yellowstone, Montana. So that's pretty neat. Not far from home. <laughs> Going alive, come out dead. That's right. Grizzly Watch out food. for them. <laughs> uh, number three is Myrtle Beach Travel Park in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. <laughs> so if you're over in the south, that's a pretty place to go to. Um, and then number four is Zion, Zion River Resort, Virgin, is that right? Utah. All right, so we got Utah on the map. Number five, <laughs> Disney's Fort Wilderness <laughs> Resort and Campground, Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's not good. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> number six, San Francisco RV Repar- Resort, Pacifica, California. Very neat. That looks like fun. Number seven, Moab Valley RV Resort and Campground. We got Moab, Utah again. Then number eight, the Springs at Borrego RV Resort and Golf Course, Borrego Springs, California. All right, California, settle down. All right. (laughs) And I don't even know how to say number nine. Uh, I don't want to pretend I know how to say that. (laughs) You go. Take a while. I got it. (laughs) You know what? I just scratched number nine off the list. Okay. <laughs> well, it's something Island and National That's Seashore. A teak. That's a teak. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's in Maryland and Virginia. So it, it goes over the vast <laughs> area. And number 10 is Garden of the Gods. I have heard of this RV resort, Colorado Springs, Colorado. So that might be a, a neat one. Obviously, do your research. <laughs> yeah. So look at the list, you know. Um, I would say these are someone's where these are someone's personal favorite. You know what I mean? See what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, your favorite might not even be close to any of these right. things. And there might be more famous ones out there. Right. You know? But, you know, it gives you an idea, you know, yeah. covers some states <laughs> and that's cool. Um, yeah. So if you just go search RV parks, you know, popular RV parks or convenient ones, whatever it might be. Right. It'll give you, you know, an idea. And again, it's just like we always say, it's just opens up your mind and gets you looking on the, on the, on maps and. Exactly. The internet trying to find uh, popular places to go or good places to go, not necessarily popular. Uh Uh-huh. Some of the best places are where no one goes. Right. Whatever tickles your fancy, really, you know. Exactly, you You, know. You do it. (laughs) You know, maybe just some local campgrounds around you or RV parks. That's it, it, you know. Exactly. That find might the be best your one. list, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, these are just some people that make these lists up. They put them yeah. on the internet, and they got some affiliate link to buy some garbage right. on Amazon or something, you know. <laughs> from Disney. <laughs> yeah, from Disney. Get a goofy hat or something. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I'm not knocking them for doing it, but it's just that's their list. You yep. know, a lot of these things you see on the internet are like that, you know, like, Mm-hmm. The most popular RV sewer hoses for 2023. They just go and grab a bunch of junk off the internet and make it on there. Then they put it into a list, make it sound uh, authoritative. Right. And then they give you links to Amazon or eBay or something where they make you a little percentage on selling it. It's all about selling. It's not about helping you make a good purchase. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's why we're here. <laughs> all right. So I guess that I should have covered that at the beginning of the show. That's where you generally go on these little things. <laughs> So, again, it just opens up your mind and exploring the United States. There's a lot of things in the United States worth seeing. And also, as a reminder, check out 
our favorite magazine, RV Destinations Magazine. Go to rvdestinationsmagazine.com, and it is an awesome publication. It'll definitely whet your appetite for places to go. Now, let's jump into RV Envy. And hey, look at this. We're going to talk about sewer hoses. Didn't I just talk about that? Because I'm knocking people for raining them. That's right. <laughs> I forgot what episode I was in. Okay, so we're actually going to do a video on this as well, or the video's the video's done. <laughs> forgot what we already have in the queue. So sewer hoses come down to this. Good, better, and best. Those are the three that you should be considering. Now, if you're looking at a blue hose, don't even consider it. They come with RVs. It's just the cheapest hose you can get. Good would be like from Volterra, their red um, easy um, easy sewer hose. And then their better would be the Dominator. Then the Viper would be their best. They do have a Silverback, which somewhere between the Dominator and the Viper. It's kind of the better of the better. <laughs> and that's just Volterra. You know, Camco has theirs. They have the better and the best. They don't have, well, they have some low-quality ones, too, which I would just stay away from. And then Thetford has a, I guess, a better one. It's um, Theirs is black with green fittings. And it's a good hose. You know, I mean, the, the good, better, and the best of the brands are all good hoses. But if you can, stick with the better or the best. They cost more money, but you get your you get more out of it. That's for sure. You know, we sell more of the Dominator and the Rhino hose than anything else we have because they're in the better category. So that price is somewhere in the middle of the good and the best. But they're good hoses. They're not, you know, our customers aren't replacing them every other day, every six months, every year. They last for years, especially if you add a little um, care to it. Don't drag it on the ground. Don't walk on it. Even though some of them you can walk on, you can step on, doesn't mean you want to go your, out of your way to do that type of thing. So that's just a little helpful hint there on RV Envy today. Having a good sewer hose, not one that's leaking and constantly breaking all the problems, the ends popping off. And oh, by the way, buy sewer hose sewer hoses that come with the ends already on there don't add your own ends it's a hassle anymore you barely save any money it's not worth it just buy them with the ends already on there make it super simple so that's going to bring us to the end of our show today episode num number 141 our next episode 142 is about when it comes to rv parts do brand name products really matter we're going to discuss that in the next episode so this is Eric Stark, and I want to thank you for listening today to the Smart RVer Podcast. It's been great hanging out with you. If I don't see you on the road, let's connect at thesmartrver.com.